So welcome to the first episode of uh, the 2016 season. Here we are in Montague Gold Mines, Montague, Nova Scotia. This was gold mining country, obviously, from the uh, name of uh, Montague itself, the official title, Montague Gold Mines. I'm back here in the forest, just beyond a residential area on some old walking trails. People come here to walk their dogs and ride ATVs. Years ago, I came here uh, as, I guess, one of my first mine hunts in my life, uh, just blown away by the number of openings that were showing on the provincial abandoned mine opening map. But the reason we're out here, and the reason this area is so compelling, is because there's hundreds of these, hundreds of mine openings. This was a gold mining area that used shaft mining. They went down, they either stoped from the surface or did um, trenching but mostly they went down with shafts, um, 30, 40, 50, 100 feet, and then they went horizontal. There are remnants of the old workings throughout the forest here, although the forest is hugely overgrown. If you, you know, walk around enough, you uh, come across things like this strange giant concrete cube. There are abutments and um, foundations everywhere. There are, of course, uh, remnants of openings, mostly all flooded because the area is just about at lake level and there is a large lake here. So the groundwater is basically going to fill most of the holes up to the top. They all seem to be marked. Like I say, there are orange hazardous hole signs peppered by the hundreds through here. Starting the season with a non-underground episode such as this one just gives us a chance to sort of work on uh, the new look and uh, get it fixated in what the rest of the season's going to look like. Incorporating some new gear, uh, new shooting format, new lenses, and a, a drone camera which we'll be utilizing when applicable in various episodes. So let's start tromping around here in the Montague Forest following the, uh, the hiking trail and uh, see what we can find with all of these hundreds, oodles of danger signs throughout the forest. Which ones will turn up something, which ones won't? What is left out here in the Montague Gold Mines? Let's go! All right, I was successful in locating the, uh, the scary shaft. It wasn't too difficult. And if we come up through here, you'll find a large clearing here in the middle of the forest. And at the bottom of this pit is where the scary shaft came up back in the day. Um, there it is fenced in by the provincial government for safety, but that is where the, uh, the shaft came up to the surface. Of course, I will show uh, what it looks like underground via old historical drawings. Uh, some incredible um, stoping, just, just large, large caverns. Getting a little closer here, uh, you can see that the uh, the flooding is quite extreme this time of year with all the uh, the spring melt-off coming. Uh, that whole mine down there is flooded right to the top. Um, in the summer months, if we were to come back in July, um, this would be down to sort of what looks like a, a concrete uh, foundation with uh, some grating over it. And if you did hop the fence and stood on the grating, you would be looking down into some water, but it would be probably 40, 50 feet down below uh, surface level here. And of course, that would just go down into the abyss of, the, uh, of all of the cavernous stoping that is, uh, is going on under the ground here. Of course, it's still frozen over here, and uh, you can see a light peppering of snow on top of the ice. Uh, but there is the fence coming up out of the, uh, the flood. And there, of course, are the uh, traditional provincial government warning signs, danger open holes. Yeah, that's what she looks like right now. Well, here's another spot of abandonment in the middle of the woods. And if you uh, look around here, you'll see uh, distinct 
areas where there was uh, some kind of chutes or kind of comes down here into a pit, but it all slopes down there from those concrete abutments that are up there, further up the hill in the, in the forest. Here we are up at the top of the hill and there is the, uh, the largest abutment here at the top. Let's have a little walk here and take a peek. But if you look closely, uh, there's the old bolts where things were bolted down. Lots of interesting debris around. That heads up that way. Danger, open holes, oh my god. <laughs> Here is a, uh, what looks to be the uh, remainder of a shaft that went down and uh, it is kind of snow filled at the bottom. Nothing spectacular, but you can certainly see where there was something there. That's what kind of everything out here is like at this point. Here's some fairly large concrete uh, abutments or structures of some kind here. Kind of looks like a, uh, a fortress. But the trees are well grown up around it and out of it as well. <laughs> Let's poke around. This is the infamous uh, Montague tailings fields. Um, this is the first one. There's one further off in the distance there beyond the trees on the horizon, but just large open expanses of sort of this sandy, soily material. And it is uh, laced with arsenic and mercury, and it is considered a local um, environmental hazard. Sort of a bad thorn in the side of the uh, Department of Environment here in Nova Scotia. It's been discussed for, for decades what to do with this. Really nothing has been done. Um, this area used to have signs posted everywhere near it. I think there was one there I found that I'll show, but uh, up on a tree. But um, this field is, uh, and the one beyond it, is famous for uh, all-terrain vehicles, uh, kids on their motorbikes, especially from the local neighborhoods coming here and tearing around. You can see a lot of the track tracks on the ground. Uh, all of this, the whole ground here is um, not very uh, receptive to plant life. So you can see it still kind of remains an open expanse of, um, of nothingness. Uh, there's some grass that's bedded down, but shrubbery and uh, weeds and, and the typical things you see in a Nova Scotia field just don't take root here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a really a good good place. Um, there are health concerns for uh, those who kick up dust with their motorcycles or ATVs that um, you do get the dust in your lungs. Again, high mercury and arsenic content. So I don't know where all the warning signs went. I think I only found the one, but um, that's kind of what we're dealing with out here. And um, this again was from the, uh, the pounding and the milling of all of the uh, rock and, and quartz that came up from underground. They, they uh, pounded it into a fine powder, sand, and then they of course use the arsenic and mercury to get the fine gold out of it. So this is where it all ended up. The legacy of it uh, ends up here in the Montague tailings fields. Here's a distinctly noticeable area of waste rock piles that are out here in the middle of the forest um, all around me. Also in the distance are uh, dozens and dozens of those orange uh, open hole signs I can see in the distance. So I'm going to poke around and see what I can find. Interestingly enough, over here, there is a concrete abutment that is very unique. Let's have a close look. This concrete foundation thing has um, ore cart tracks as its uh, fortification in the concrete. And uh, that was fairly interesting to see. 
Here is another one. It is a long trench of sorts, quite obvious. Filled with uh, water, slightly frozen over, but it is a deep, dark abyss that is flooded. Um, probably some kind of uh, open soap to the surface. It's an old bus out here collapsed into the ground. Let's have a look at it. Here's some more uh, automotive junk over here and a bus stuffed in the forest way out here. Here's another spot atop of some uh, waste rock piles here. Again, another sign marking an area that they feel should be noted. And there are some uh, chasms here, some twin chasms cut through the trees. Like I say, it's obvious trenching or the, uh, the subsidence into, the, uh, into a stope that's down below that's come up near the surface. Uh, it gets pretty deep down and over there under the ice, but uh, again, the province has these marked as hazards, so you never know what is through the, uh, the muck at the bottom of the, uh, the shallow areas. I wouldn't want to start tromping around there in my rubber boots. And there is this orange surveying tape which seems to go everywhere here suddenly, tied to trees going along. It's almost like the trail of, uh, of danger. <laughs> I don't know if they've intentionally marked this off for this reason, but of course, if you come up here, whoa, the, uh, the signs do continue and they're just about everywhere. This will be hard to show on the camera, but there is a, uh, a significant trench that drops down about eight to 10 feet here, just cut through the forest. They were obviously following a vein. I'm standing here on a ledge with my boots above here, where it goes down through there under a tree. Here I am at the end of that trench we just looked at, and it goes off into the distance there about 100, 150 feet. And here's the end of it where it seems to go deep. Um, Significant uh, freezing still on this water, which means it's very, very cold there in that little pit. But uh, there is a very straight wall there and vertical there. This could have went down into, like I say, a, a stope that they took down following a vein. It obviously looks like a vein that they were uh, taking from the surface here. Here's another one I've come across. This one's in a, a nice thick thicket of trees and there's uh, surveying tape everywhere. <laughs> but uh, it is a, you know, a significant hole. And now again, I don't know what is under this ice. I, that birch tree that you see or that log going down into it, it goes down as far as I can see through the, the crack over there from the other angle. This is approximately 15 feet wide and uh, and eight feet across, but it is a little spooky. I will, uh, I will admit that. I don't think this one might have a, a plug in it. Okay, I got curious and I decided to take this uh, long stick I found and I smashed the ice. So I've been poking down through there. Let's go down closer. If you take the, uh, the stick and put it down in, it does go way down. It goes almost to the top and then I hit a soft bottom. Now that could be just subsidence or it could be where they, uh, they put backfill into it to a certain point, who knows, but it is fairly soft. And if I pull that out, 
That would be well over my head if I, uh, if I jumped in there. It would be just to the tip of my head because this, uh, this comes up to about, it's about six feet right there. So yeah. Okay, the orange tape has brought us to a clearing now. And I notice over here on a great big stump, big rotting stump, there is a, uh, another open hole sign. And there is quite a bit of terrain in here in these bushes, but I do notice over there in the distance, there is a chain link fence. So let's push through the bushes here and see what that might be. Okay, just up ahead here, here's this chain link fence in the middle of the forest. And it does look like it goes to some kind of a pit here. Let's take a closer look. Oh yes. Definitely. So that is that shaft there, but while looking at this one, I noticed that uh, over there in the distance, there is a, another chain link fence around something. So let's go have a look over there as well. All right, looking at this one end, it looks like uh, they did do a fill of some kind. Maybe that's why it doesn't matter as much anymore. Because look at the chain link at the bottom useless. <laughs> I could crawl on my belly through there. But anyway, um, that's what we're looking at here. Just uh, looks filled. Check this out. This is hilarious. <laughs> that's great fencing work. Wow. Uh, anyway, whatever hole was in here, looks like it has uh, also been filled. They did some obvious work here. Sun's just blaring here, so hopefully it doesn't blow out the footage, but uh, yeah, that's basically what you're looking at. That may have been some kind of uh, shaft or pit, but they've, they've dealt with it here. That's why the fence has probably been given up upon. Here's another sign, not too far from that last chain link fence. And if we take another peek around here, it is just uh, one of these rat hole pits in the, uh, in the forest floor all the uh, junk and debris thrown down in there. And there's another sign there. And over here is another one of the rat pits. Again, goes down about uh, seven, eight, nine feet. Just a subsidence in the forest floor. Very obvious once you see them, once you just walk around the sign. Okay, we're still on the beaten path here in the Montague Forest and um, it still doesn't disappoint because there's yet another sign and it led me to look over in there and I see another chain link fence structure off in the distance. So let's take a walk over there and see what we find. Here it is, the chain link fence in the middle of this uh, bushy clearing. And uh, it looks like there's not much to it. Yeah, it just goes uh, into a water filled pit there. It must be something significant if they decided to build this around it though. Okay, I'm gonna hold the camera way up in the air here and uh, we'll peek over the top of the fence down through the barbed wire. That's basically what we're looking at. Some sort of shaft that came up, of course, and they don't want anyone down there. Doesn't look too nefarious to me. None of the stuff out here does, but of course, a lot of liability around here. There's a lot of residences and so on. A lot of people walk their dogs and hike and uh, bike and ATVs through the trails here, so they don't want kids coming and fiddling and fooling with all these openings, including us nosy mine hunters. Here's another one, <laughs> and uh, it leads me over here to a pit I can see in the distance that is water filled. There's some orange surveying tape around it, but again, nothing too scary. There it is. Uh, it looks deep, it's black, it's an abyss. Not too scary though. Onward we go. Here's another one. <laughs> they never end, folks. This one again, just a rat pit full of water. And uh, 
There's some surveying tape around it, all broken down, but uh, this is basically what we're dealing with. Here's another discovery of a chain link fence structure in the middle of the forest. So let's go take a peek at this one. Yeah, it just goes down into a rat hole down there that is, uh, is filled with water. So again, no drama, but it must have been deep enough or hazardous enough that they felt they had to uh, build this. And here is another one, approximately 100 feet away from the one we were just at. And uh, this one seems to have a path around it. But if you look in there, there is your, uh, there's your hole. And over here, Seems to be another one down in there. Strange. All this fence work for what looks like such benign occurrences. And about 100 feet past the last fence, there's yet another one. My goodness, they never end. In this one, same sort of thing. This collapsed uh, top of something. Shaft. <laughs> Lots of debris in this one, logs across and everything. There's another sign there in the middle of the screen. There's another one here on this collapsed log. And it is marking this opening here. Here's a better look from higher above. And it's frozen over, but yet another obvious pit down into the ground, some sort of shaft to the surface. And here's another one over here. And of course, there it is. Chasm into the ground. See another one over there. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Coming up here on another one. Just follow the signs. Danger. Looks to be over here. Yeah, it's a great big one. Flooded and frozen over. I wonder how deep that one goes down. Here's some trenching. This one's probably 40, 50 feet long. Goes down there. There's the main deep spot. Again, don't know how deep that goes down. There is some silt in it about five feet down. I can see, of course, marked. <laughs> the orange signs are everywhere! Okay, I came across some more ruins here that surprised me. These ones are really overgrown, but really cool. It's, again, like find, finding Mayan ruins in the middle of the forest. There's trees growing up through them. Really cool. We're pretty close to the highway now. You can probably hear the vehicles in the distance. Um, but yeah, this thing's just going to end up uh, rotting itself into the earth. Lots of quartz. All right, I just came off the beaten path that you can see there in the distance. I noticed some signs down here. There's a little path that comes down. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, flagging tape here in the trees. Now, if I follow the, uh, the path further, it continues to what looks to be a, uh, a waste rock pile here by the, uh, the swamp. And of course, again, all this flagging tape seems to be around this hole here. There's a swamp out there in the distance, but there is a distinct hole here. Okay, I've opened up the iris a bit. I have this, uh, this stick here. It's approximately eight to nine feet long. And uh, I'm just going to start shoving it into the water and see if I can touch bottom. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it goes off in the distance. And the water's clear, but it, like I say, it's got that blue mineral water look to it. Wow. Yeah, that takes the whole thing. And I can bend it straight down. Yeah, so I can uh, push the stick down nine feet and I still don't touch anything. So this could be like one of those big fenced, fenced in ones where we, uh, we saw it go way down. But of course, this one's by the swamp. 
and it's, uh, it's filled with the natural level of water. Here's a sign here in a clearing, and I see another fenced something over there in the distance. Let's go take a look. And there it is, trees growing out of the middle. Wonder how deep it is. Okay, we'll take a peek up and over the fence. And here's what it looks like. Pretty much flooded to the top almost. But I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it does have sort of like a, a deep, uh, a deep blackness to it that uh, I can't see silt on the bottom or anything. So with all this fencing around it, there must have been uh, something significant enough that they had to protect this one. It's out in the middle of nowhere here in the woods. So yeah, that's a strange one. Just before we conclude, I, uh, that's the main road there you see through the trees in the distance. That's the main road through Montague Gold Mines. I decided to pull over and uh, check the other side of the road as I could see that there were spots on the map that, uh, that went across the road. And uh, lo and behold, over here, there are orange signs everywhere. Sort of this uh, forest moon of Endor sort of environment <laughs> with the big, uh, the big trees. Yeah, big boulders plugging this one. They just plopped a big pile right on top. It's kind of obvious. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but here in the middle of the forest, this looks really out of place. So not too fruitful around here, I don't think. I'm going to give up. Lots of orange signs, just unfortunately, not even rat holes to look at. It's very well dealt with over here. So that will end uh, episode one of the 2016 season. And uh, this was Montague Gold Mines in Montague, Nova Scotia. We'll see you next time, hopefully underground.